I just don't think the setup's gonna work. I think we might be just kind of done here, which really sucked. Represent, represent, represent. We're not off to a good start on this one. Made it about this far. I think I'm gonna put it back together, push it back in, and spend some time on it uh, before we get it set up on the dyno. So probably actually get started on this one tomorrow. All right, everything you need to know about this as fast as I can say it. Uh, this car was actually just tuned a week or two ago at another shop. I think they kind of got set up as this car came with not an uh, adequate fuel system. I had some wiring problems and stuff too, so a good buddy of mine rewired it and wanted to touch up the tune. Looking at the log and stuff in it is, I don't know if there was a communication breakdown or what, but uh, looking at the file, this thing's out of injector at like 12 pounds of boost, but the log's at 25 pounds of boost, uh, dead lean, 150% uh, injector duty cycle. So they're gonna put new injectors in it and looking at fuel pressure, now, this isn't an injector problem, it's a fuel pump problem. So uh, they went ahead and overnighted some injectors, a fuel pump, some air tools. So he's trying to make a race that is tomorrow. Uh, this is kind of supposed to come earlier in the week, but I uh, had the issue happen to get all the fuel pump and fuel system parts. And then uh, you can't even make this stuff up. I guess the trans took a dump, like loading it onto the trailer. Uh, so then they had to pull the trans, go through the trans, bring it. Uh, yesterday, I kind of thought we were just going to be making some fueling changes to kind of touch up, clean up with the new injectors and new fuel pump. But after going through the file, I kind of needed to do a whole lot more. It ran real, real bad. So I want to make sure I wanted to make sure that everything was actually good to go before we put it on the dyno. So it's running a whole lot better. And today is kind of do or die. It's, uh, we gotta get this thing kind of running or else it was kind of all for nothing. This does have a C4 Transit. Didn't even make it onto the trailer. So I think the main goal for today is to hopefully get it off the dyno without the trans exploding. So I guess next step's gonna be put a glide or something in it. All right, let's set this thing up on dyno. All right, first thing we're gonna do is make sure that this thing is gonna start. It took probably like 15, 20 tries to get it to start when they pulled it off of the trailer. Uh, now, like nothing that I'm saying here is me talking shit on whoever had their hands in this before, whatever else. Uh, I know who it is, seems to do good work. I just do some things differently. And like I said, they changed injectors. So I'm sure a lot of like the poor running and stuff is a result of that. But one thing I did notice is that they had the idle control valve set up as a PWM positive and it's wired as a PWM negative. So by swapping that, now the idle control works. I noticed like all of the idle control stuff was basically all maxed out, which is kind of a red flag. Uh, so now that we have a working idle control valve and I've taken a truckload of fuel out of this, uh, both at startup and just in the fuel map, uh, we were at like 95% VE at idle previously, now we're about 50, and uh, I've done some scaling and some different things. So it was starting up good yesterday, but I haven't done like a full cold start yet. So I'm not expecting it to be perfect now by any means, but uh, hopefully we can at least just make it not so frustrating to start. Let's see what happens. Let's cycle the fuel pump again. Was pretty uneventful. I'm really happy with that. It cranks a little longer than I like, but there's nothing I can do about that because we're not using like a drop down. It's a custom ignition setup because it has a crank trigger and all that. Uh, so that is what it is, but it fired up perfect. There was no, no throttle input or anything. So he should be happy with that. So next thing I'm going to do is sync the timing and I verified their PID settings for the boost control. That stuff seems like it's spot on, so I don't think we have to touch that. And I've changed the, all of the values like kind of as a whole in the fuel table pretty dramatically, like I said, but I am going to keep 
the actual like shape of the fuel curve you can see here it kind of looks like a roller coaster uh, as far as how fast and how hard it's ramping up which is interesting to me because this is how a fuel curve looks in most other softwares but for whatever reason with Holly they just don't have that same like violent like ramp up like that I actually prefer being able to see it like this uh, so I'm curious to see uh, if this is going to work out kind of correctly I'm putting my faith in that it is hence the reason that's why we're going to start there and then as far as the timing it looks like an LS timing map to me and this is obviously a small block forward uh, but at the same time they might have just been being super conservative uh, so we'll keep the timing soft and probably bring that in a little bit and see what happens all right so I'm going to sync the timing throw some ice in the intercooler oh, this is just a race car so we'll spend just a little bit of time on the cruising in part throttle and then we'll start making some runs with the co2 off but it's looking good so far the way it ran yesterday I didn't have my hopes real high all right timing was spot on just gonna do a little part throttle this thing <laughs> I'm such a weirdo this thing can make 4,000 horsepower and I'd be more excited about the way that it cold started I'll probably catch a bunch of shit for saying this but these small black forts sound so much better than the LS's I just had the dyno uh, set to hold the car at about 3,500 RPM minus whatever the converter wants to do. That's the other thing. This thing used to be supercharged. Now it has a turbo, and I don't know if they changed or did anything with the converter. drain this water out, put the ice in, and we're ready to get started. I'm actually impressed. I remember to stop and get ice for this thing this morning. I'm just going to start with like 10 pounds of CO2 on it. A lot of times I'll just leave the CO2 off, but making runs at 2 or 3 pounds of boost is just kind of a waste of time. And I'll probably just do a little short pull here. Made 600 already, and kind of uh, the the big ramp in the fuel curve is dead fat, like 30% something. It maxed out the closed loop correction, uh, but once we got past the big ramp, uh, then it was pretty close. So I'm gonna check out this log. I made 600 already. We'll see what the boost is and all that good stuff. All right, I just reshaped the entire fuel curve, so I guarantee you I made things worse. <laughs> and not better so it's probably going to take a few runs to get this kind of back in line Alright, well that seems impossible. The fuel pressure uh, went from 50 pounds to 110 pounds and I pulled a truckload of fuel out of it and the air fuel went 
uh, like three or four thousand percent rich as if the fuel pressure actually did change so that's a new one let me investigate this all right fuel pressure's at 50 psi now if i turn the intercooler water pump on the fuel pressure goes to 110 which sounds like the water pump is triggering the second stage of the fuel pump if that's the case it would have been cool to have known about that so it has a 10 gallon per minute pump on it and a dash 8 return line and a tiny regulator I just don't think the setup's gonna work I think we might be just kind of done here which really sucks All right, to put this into perspective, Aeromotive obviously recommends a bigger regulator, uh, but they also recommend a Dash 12 return line. This is a Dash 8. I actually didn't know this, but apparently the high speed of, the, of these brushless pumps is double the flow rate uh, on low speed, which means it's a 10 gallon per minute pump. If we just run it on low speed, it'll be five gallons per minute, which is gonna be plenty for this car. So we're just gonna try and move forward by uh, you know, running on low speed. And I was right, the high speed is tied into the uh, water pump for the intercooler. So, uh, we'll just unhook this for now. All right, problem solved, hopefully. All right, let's try this again. Six fifty, just pulling some fuel out of it. It's still pretty fat, so we got to take some more fuel. It was so rich, I don't, I never take like the full amount out, but it still wasn't quite enough. Um, all right, let me check this one out. All right, made one more run. Now our fueling is uh, dead nuts, so we can start turning the boost up. But I always kind of say you expect to see 40, 50, eh, let's say thirty-five to fifty VE at idle. And then most Holly cars are about 110 in boost. Uh, so we're like right at 45.50 at idle when we were at 95 before. And now we were at like 100 and shit, I think it was 100, 150 before you could see where the fuel pressure ran away. Uh, and now we're at like 110, a peak of 111. And the aggressiveness of how that fuel curve came up is now uh, kind of far more standard. So I've done most of the shaping on this using the large table, and now that we're close, I've switched over to the small table. A little bit more of what I'm used to seeing here. So, all right, let's throw 10 pounds of CO2 at it and see what happens. I was making 650 at six pounds of boost, which is pretty good. A76. This thing is super uneventful, which I like. 876 so far, and that was at, I think it was like 13 PSI. So I'm gonna try to uh, put one degree of timing in it. Just gonna put some fresh ice in it and see where we're at. Uh, realistically, uh, given, kind of given where we're at, I would say we might be able to get to a thousand under 20 pounds, which would be nice and I don't necessarily think he wants to go much higher than that as this trans is uh, kind of probably questionable even at these power levels. Power was identical, but the boost was actually like a pound and a half lower. So we'll leave that timing there. Turn the boost up one more time and probably start pulling some plugs. This one has a heat range eight plugs, which I'd like to have something a little colder in there. Feeling's good, voltage is good. 
Oil pressure is actually a little bit lower on that run. So if it's got a dipstick, I'll check the oil real quick. Target and dome match. Air fuel and target match. 14.0 volts. Fuel pressure is not rising exactly one to one, but we're still only 50, 55% duty cycle, something like that. So we're good there. I'm gonna add 3% fuel basically everywhere above 12 pounds. And so we'll probably throw another five pounds of dome pressure at it. Here's the difference. Uh, the red is when it had a supercharger on it and the blue is now with the turbo. And uh, this, you can see it's flashing the converter real hard here. Uh, and even though the dome pressure and the target dome pressure are matching spot on, the boost is a little higher here and then kind of tapers back down. Pretty normal, especially bigger turbo on a smaller motor. But you can see it's because of the flash, it says it's making a bunch of torque. All right, put some ice in it. Uh, check the oil, that looked good. Pulled some plugs, they all look uh, super soft, kind of as I would expect with this timing level in it. Uh, turn the boost up another few pounds, and that's kind of really about it. Um, didn't necessarily like that the oil pressure was a little lower at the top of that run, so we'll keep an eye on that. Fuel level's good. Uh, everything looks good, so I think we'll just turn it up a little bit more. Looks great. Let's take a look at that real quick. I think you should be happy with that. Uh, I obviously haven't looked to see what the boost is yet, but it was only 13 pounds before turning it up that time. So yeah, this thing's uh, nice and healthy. I think he's gonna have a lot of fun with this. So the coolest part about this whole thing and and the main reason I, I mean, you always want them to go good, but the main reason I wanted this one uh, to go so good, one is he just went through hell and back to try and make it to this race. And uh, the other side of it is this has been like such a community effort. It's a good friend of mine did just rewired the whole car. Uh, another longtime friend uh, did the machine work and the motor for the car. Uh, the guy that did the trans, the same guy that does everyone else's trans around here. A uh, really good friend of mine did a bunch of kind of work on the car and did the turbo kit and the fabrication. And then obviously the owner of the car did some work on it too, but the coolest part about that is he uh, did the paint and body work on the car himself. And to my knowledge, I don't think he is or has ever been a paint or body guy. So I always like that. Uh, let's see. So as this ramps up, uh, it takes a second for the fueling to stabilize. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, we'll check a log like from the track on that. But once the converter grabs it, we're adding 3% early on and then like 2% for the rest of the run. Looks like it's like 18 or 19 pounds. So kind of I was expecting that we'd hit 1,000 less than 20. So that's pretty spot on. Uh, didn't rev it to the moon on the dyno. Yeah, fuel pressure's down. Probably about three or four PSI from where it should be but it's got enough injector to handle it. The oil pressure is right back up to 75, 70, whatever it is. Uh, on the one run, it went to like 50, but apparently that just wasn't too accurate. Voltage is good, fuel looks good, and it took like 26 pounds of dumb pressure uh, to do that. So this basically has kind of come down to the last minute. They should be able to pick it up tonight, do the finishing touches on it tonight, uh, tomorrow morning, and then hopefully make it out to the racetrack and have some fun with it. That's going to do it for this video. Sorry I wasn't a little more uh, interactive on the video side of things. I uh, just don't have a lot of time to work with uh, today, so I'm just kind of covering the basics. But anyways, I'll see you next time.